Hey, so welcome back to our latest episode of Creator Interviews. And we are welcomed back by one of our previous winners. This is the award-winning writer, director, and creator of not just Brazi Jazzy, but also Lower East Sides. So welcome, Mr. Steve Becker. Hey, Chris. How are you? Thanks for having me back. Uh, All right. Pleasure. 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 By the way, cool. just so the audience know, congratulations on Chris on graduating from something from somewhere or other because he hasn't mentioned what it is. Oh yes, yes, yes. I've I, I've toyed with the with the notion of teaching and uh, put it off for uh, uh, for fifteen years. So <laughs> just uh, just uh, <laughs> just uh, gone and uh, got my uh, PGC, which is the. Uh, uh, postgraduate stuff in education so now you can kind of teach I, i've been teaching filmmaking and stuff anyway so um without a degree just uh, <laughs> just for the hell of it you know well you know <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so i thought now this this would allow me to then go into um say you know universities or schools and stuff and do it so it's um yeah it's something i've put off and uh, we've done it so yeah thank you very much we've done that and That's as we were saying do I have to call you professor or doctor or something like that now? Well, that, that's the next uh, qualification. <laughs> if, I, if I was to do it, but I think I'm uh, taking a break. Yeah, I don't think I'll be getting a doctor at any time. So, but yeah, Dr. Hembry, that could be good, couldn't it? Doctor of web series. I mean... Uh, there we go. There we go. Two of you out there, yeah. yeah. You're cutting edge, baby. You're cutting edge. Accept it. <laughs> yeah. oh, I love it. So anyway, that that's uh, you, you're very good there. You cut into me, but uh, what about you, Mr. Becker? Uh, last time we spoke, uh, I think we just had Lower East Sides in. Uh, Brazzy Jazzy still doing its festival runs and stuff, isn't it? And you were looking at uh, doing a, a follow up to Brazzy Jazzy with the same format, but with a new character. I think. Uh, what's well, going on yeah. on that front? Well, we have done that. Um, oh, you've done it? Yeah, for uh, necessity, you know, pandemic has brought the necessity being the mother of invention on a lot of things. Um, I think we've talked about my wife has a Brazilian skincare spa and rightly, or we'll see, because we're in the middle of doing it now, some of her clients are, you know, Victoria's Secret models, things like that. Some are more famous than others. And they're like, oh, we love that show. We want to be on it. You know, again, I call it herding cats because trying to get anyone in one place. Well, you mean you want to shoot in three days? Well, I don't know about that. I can maybe like two months from now. So we've been shooting that a little lower budget centered around her spa. But we have like two offshoots of it. One, I'd like to, you know, my actress, shout out to Tatiana Meyer, who won uh, Best Actress in Rio Web Fest, which was huge. But she's living in Brazil now. And uh, when I was down there, we were going to shoot some stuff of, you know, that character back in Brazil. It's, you know, things didn't you're work not, out uh, in New York. You know? You're not still on location now, are you? Uh, virtually. I'm here in New York. It's uh, it's a lot more exciting skyline with this, and you know I like the floating action. Uh, so you know, there's like it's sort of breaking out into like three pieces. One is more geared towards you know the wild, crazy goings on at my wife's skincare spa, which most you know half her clients are Brazilian. The other part is you know our character of Jasmina Jazzy in Brazil now, and maybe going back and forth between the United States. You know, her life post pandemic, you know, wasn't quite legal to be living in the United States, which has caused an issue of trying to get back in. And, you know, we're trying to use the pandemic to our advantage here to uh, open up storylines. And then the third is you're going to be the first one to know about this because we'll be shooting pretty soon is the boy version, the man. You know, oh, it's yeah. a, men can do this too. It's a, uh, Brazzy Boys, so to speak, is the working title, but it's really going to be shot in Miami. And it's going to be centered on some Brazilian guys, musical guys, trying to hit it big in Miami with their little trio and band and stuff like that. And was that one based on any uh, real experiences, the kind of Brazzy Boys aspect? Does that come from uh, anywhere? I have a little more experience. You know, my, uh, 
uh, that, you know, dealing with guys. And I actually, for the year and a half that Brazzy's been circling the world and especially in Brazil, <laughs> they're like, well, where are the guys? You know, and, you know, enough of the girls dancing around. The guys are like, you know more about us than well, why are you not doing this? And, you know, it's so boring watching the women. Let's, uh, the guys are far more interesting, so they claim. So we'll see. Gotta, have, gotta show a little balance here, a little diversity, you know. Uh, the yeah. It's like you're building a, a little, uh, you, building a little universe, aren't you? It's all in <laughs> the brand so. universe, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's great. That's, that's a great idea of how you can expand it, isn't it? Yeah, well... I will say this, and I, I'm going to give you, you know, I joke around a lot, but what Brazzy Jazzy, and this is why I tell anyone else who wants to make web series, because I was, uh, I've been uh, gifted, I should say, uh, the pleasure of, as part of Rio Web Fest, and you know, Leandro and Dan. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Incredible job of teaching. It's not just like, hey, show you stuff. They really spread out. So they had me um, be a mentor to about 10 young uh, web series creators down there. And, you know, their resources are so limited. It's not the U.S. or England by any means. So um, the biggest thing I always ask them first, what is your goal of making this web series? Is it just, to, hey, cool, I'm going to throw something up on YouTube and you and a learning experience? Or is it like a a calling card or your business card of, hey, look, I can make a good show. Uh, please hire me to work in some real job for you know Netflix, even if it's as a lighting guy, sound guy, whatever. Or is it to, you have a creative story to tell, you wanna tell it and you put your passion into it and the end result will be something you're proud of and will lead you to something else. And I feel that's the best way. If you're trying to do something like, I want to do something like The Office to show that I can do something like The Office, I'm going to tell you something. They've already done The Office and it's going to be a lot better than your version. Yeah. And yeah. They want, they want to see people who will do new stuff. So what, so getting the long way bound, the, the Brazzy Jazzy, franchise i'll call it because you know me me and thor you know very similar we have a franchise oh i like Thor. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Has, has given me some more street cred in brazil i have dealing with, with distributors and you know larger producers and people want to do stuff together and that's really as a as a gringo as an american here in the united states those who here who are in the United States listening to me, you know, our dozens of followers, it's the competition here is intense. So you have to find out what separates yourself. For me, I've lived in Brazil a long time. My wife is Brazilian. I speak their language, Portuguese. And I was trained in the United States, which is a rarity because down there, they don't have the sort of training that, that you know, you got with your you know, close to doctorate and uh, I have in my film school experience. It's just a different way of making projects that resonate in Brazil, but as they say, have legs outside of Brazil that can show in England and people will want to watch it. Not like, well, this, you know, the quality is not there. It's not our style. It's going to be a little more you know, mm. conform to our, our standards. So hopefully I can straddle both worlds and it has open doors. What I do with that open door is up to me now. And that's what I tell everyone. You get your foot in the door, that's not the victory. The victory is then we, you know, while you still your foot still attached to your body, yeah, yeah. what are you gonna do with it? You know, you get the opportunity, don't you know, have something ready. And that's the other thing is don't yeah. just have one series. This is my series, this is all I have. Uh, so what else do you have? Uh, I don't know, season two? Uh, no. You have to have two or three other ideas. No, I got this, where Tommy climbs a tree and discovers uh, he uh, can fly like a coconut or whatever. Whatever your pitch is that you're like, all right, what, I don't know about that. What about, all right, I have this dog that can talk Farsi to me. And for some reason, I understand what he's saying. Oh, that sounds interesting. <laughs> Just something you have to have yeah. a fleshed out idea. So uh, what is next? Now, uh, what do you mean? Uh, when, 
when you asked them then, he said, what do you know, what is your goal to like these young filmmakers? Uh, what was like the common answer then when they, when you asked them that? Well, I would say half said, I just, you know, I want to make something that people are going to like. I said, well, that's absolutely the wrong answer. How do you know what people are going to like? Yes. Like, yeah. you know what they yeah. like? They like something that's good. That, yep. that you have a perspective on. They're not going to say, well, since the office, I, I'm going to keep beating on the office because as you have someone who's a judge and reviews a lot of submissions, there's a lot of people who try to be like the office, very dry humor and, and you know, looks, and it's really hard to do. It's, it's, uh, well, and if it's not done well, it's very slow pacing. And it's like, wow. You need to, you know, tell, we know that storytelling genre. Tell, do a different kind of comedy. I've seen stuff on this web series circus that just blown me away. I'm like, wow, that was awesome. That was, and I learned from it. I don't know everything. I barely know anything. I don't have the you know, near doctorate that Chris Fimbria has, but uh, it's be open to new ideas, but if you're going to do something, you're going to put, and let's be honest, it's going to be mostly your money because yeah. you're yeah. in the United States. Uh, unless you live in Canada or Australia or uh, maybe Germany who would give money to these projects, it's coming out of your pocket, your, your family's pocket, your friend's pocket. You yeah. do that once. You do that once. And if it's a, if it's a success, you still, they're still not going to make their money back, but at least they're like, well, it was a good venture. If it's a yeah. failure, there's going to be some very hard dinner conversation for the next few years over uh, Christmas, <laughs> Easter, Hanukkah, whatever your uh, thing is. So uh, you remember that time I gave you money to make that web series? What happened to that series? <laughs> we've, got, we've got 700 uh, DVDs. <laughs> Still DVDs, right. No VHS yeah. from the uh, 890s, yeah. It's my first feature that way. I have a lot of DVDs from my first feature. Oh, really? From, from 10 years ago, yeah, back when, oh, you make all your money on DVDs. If you mass produce them now, when it's ready after the festival run, you'll, you, know, you can- Yeah, smash you know, it, yeah. It costs you like 70 cents to make, you know, if you buy a thousand of them. If, uh, You're silly not to, oh, yeah. <laughs> They've been uh, stocking stuffers for family and friends for about a decade I was going to say about presents, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you never know. You could be like uh, Santa going around all the different flats in America apartments, putting them in the doorsteps and stuff. Yeah. Spread the word. Else spread the I word. Know that, uh, a shout out to Dan Mervish, who actually did that. So, uh, filmmaker. Mind you, people are getting rid of DVD players now, aren't they, actually? Do you even have a DVD player? I mean, that's, uh, I know today's Prime Day for those who are on Amazon, so you may want to pick up a DVD player for 20 bucks, but. Uh, yeah, let's roll it. <laughs> <laughs> My wife gave me a DVD of some thing, a course she wanted to watch. I'm like, why do you have a DVD? She goes, there's no well, place on my computer for it. I go, yeah, I know. Well, well this DVD is an ROM. <laughs> some things there. DVD but yeah. I was going to say, this is interesting, because we're talking about kind of the rise and fall of um, DVDs and stuff, and it went to Blu-ray and the rest of it. Um, I think at the minute, where do you think, um, where do you think web series is as a whole at the minute? And where do you think it's kind of going from your trajectory? Because it constantly is evolving, isn't it? And it's, uh, where, do you, where do you think it is? And where do you think it's going to? I didn't need to do that, but no, that's all right. Um, <laughs> I have to give a learned answer here, even though there's uh, many academics studying it, because as you know, uh, Joel Bassage is doing a whole study. Oh, yeah. It's my personal experience, and from what yeah. I've seen, people are churning out. There's so much out there. There's so much noise. Now, the British Web Awards, I don't know, they have thousands of submissions you get that you go through, and you could be a little, probably a, a more honest uh, arbiter of what's going on, of how many minutes you'll watch of something before you go, it's just not worth it. Uh, well, I think we're still the ones who just, we still watch everything. Really? 
Wow. Because the reason I say that is from being a filmmaker, technically, you know, like a season finale, your last episode should really be your best, you know, to some degree, isn't it? Your first and your last, really. So I always think, I always hold on for that last episode because I think this, you know, <laughs> and if that's shit, then I think, oh, fuck. <laughs> but technically, but, you know, technically, you know, you'd save your best till last and... I remember talking to someone at a festival who, who was watching them and said, no, they only watched a couple of episodes. And I thought, shit, my best episode was the last one, you know? So I was a bit like, ah, oh, you know, so oh, oh. I, I, and again, I say we're filmmakers make this web series for filmmakers. So that's one of the lessons uh, I brought with us to try and watch everything, you know? So. Well, and that's why I do so much virtual dating because you never leave your apartment. It's, uh, <laughs> you know, I, you know, from my film school background and I worked in LA uh, for a while and a little in distribution, it's five minutes a year. Um, now with web series, that's one episode maybe. If you don't have something, you come in with a bitch slap, as I say, the first 30 seconds, something big has that. I'm like, whoa, woke me up. Uh, all right, yeah. I'll, I'll watch this. Um, it's, it's really hard to get people to watch to the end. Now, you were going to give them the link to other episodes, but you know, most festivals only allow you to submit 15 minutes max anyways. Yeah. Uh, so making your best 15 minutes doesn't necessarily have to be the first three episodes. As you said, if it's the first, third, and last yeah. episode, those are the three you submit. Don't like, wait, wait. And I learned something that in filmmaking school because it was, you know, my teacher was an asshole. Um, I won't mention his name. <laughs> One of my teachers, some were fantastic. There you go. <laughs> we're watching, you know, it's only like a 10 minute short I did. And, you know, to emphasize that mine was moving a little slowly. And this is why to this day I move very quickly. He was like yawning, you know, the fake yawn. Like, really? Uh, he's like going, oh, God. And everyone else is like, oh my God, I don't want him to watch mine. But that was his way of teaching, like, don't do this. Yeah, you yeah. Better not. And my first feature was the same thing when I had my a test screening for friends. And I remember saying to myself, oh, it really picks up after this scene. It's really going to get going. And I'm like, what? Why is this scene in here? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And that's the that's when you look go from being, oh, I'm trying this out as a web series to having the cold-hearted ability to just say, this scene is good, it doesn't work with the rest of it, I gotta cut it out. And you know, I don't care what the actor is gonna cry and you know, scream or whatever, but, and then you take something out and then you don't watch for a while, you watch it like you know, a week later and you're like, you don't even remember it was even there. Yeah. That's when you know it's right. Because I have so many times like, oh my God, it's you know, once once we hit the seven in mark, it's really getting kicking. I'm like, why are we waiting for the seven minute mark? We yeah. come in at the seven mark that, and then maybe go back a little bit, but boom, we gotta go. So um, it's it's so, funny because you only get that usually when you're at a screening, don't you? That's when you've learned the how you think, oh shit. You know, it, it, it's a bit hard when you're by yourself at times, isn't it, I guess? Or, you know, you can be a bit self-indulgent. It's all good. But now when you get to that audience, you think, ah, oh, shit, yeah, you can feel it, can't you? Well, as you said, it was a little weird last year because I went around and finally went to some of the festivals. So my wife's like, nice. oh, who cares, you know, that you're winning this thing. We don't get to go to Barcelona. What, what does it matter? I'm like, oh, I'm sorry if my... Uh, my success isn't uh, helping your travel. <laughs> but, uh, it was, you're so used to for the last two and a half years of, of the joy. I think it's better to be able to watch at home these screenings because of festivals. A lot of times you're running around, you're like, where do I want to watch this? I want to catch this panel, you know, this. now you're just doing it from the comfort of your home with or without your pants on saying, I'll watch you know, a little of this, and you're, yeah. you're stopping it. Like, I don't want to watch anymore. I'm next, you know, onto this. The ones who have it on their platforms, uh, like Soul does a very good job. All their stuff is there. You mm -hmm. watch it, what you want to watch, and not what you want to watch. So I went to um, uh, Series Land, which is a great series, you know. Oh, yeah. yeah. They show everything. So, 
and they don't tell you which what you know, you're in this block, but you don't know what else is there. So you're there, you're like, oh my God. Some is good, some is not, but they also kept it to like you know, seven, eight minutes, one episode you get, or, or two episodes total in eight minutes. So sorry, Oliver and Rose, if you're listening, I think the greatest festival ever. Um, but you're sitting there and you realize, God, I can't believe uh, I'm, I'm here. <laughs> I, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm here for another hour and a half I, with a mystery of what I'll be watching. And <laughs> you actually get angry at some of the filmmakers who are there when you, you were forced to sit through their stuff and they go out to you after and say, hey, so that was really, what'd you think? I went, oh. mm. <laughs> Whereas online, I could just wait, oh, sorry, I have a call and you know disconnect. Yeah, yeah. Now you're, I had forgotten what it's like to be in person with someone and have to go to their face. Oh well, you know it was interesting. Oh, yeah, the lighting really just like, exploded off the screen, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> but you're learning again as people are going back into the theater and then watching stuff. They're even less patient now. You know, yeah. one you're around someone who's coughing, you don't know if they have COVID or not. So yeah. <laughs> you uh, you're like, I bet it'd be worth it for me to come out here and uh, watch this film. Otherwise I could just watch it at home. And, and on Amazon, anyone who has their series or films on Amazon, Amazon got very cute a couple of years ago. And they, you know, they revenue share with you. So before it was how many minutes were watched. Now is if you don't watch the whole thing, they don't pay you. Oh, is that right? They're saying that now. Yeah, for movies, that's a lot. You have to say, so if someone watches like half your movie and I'm like, yeah, all right, maybe I'll watch it later. And you get nothing. You don't get the 10p. <laughs> 10p. <You know? laughs> uh, maybe a little bigger than the, uh, or my one-tenth of a penny. Yes, I, uh, it was. Yeah. But it that's, is. they will, look, there's a reason they're gazillionaires. They're like, look, if they're not going to watch the whole thing, uh, why should, uh, why are we, collecting anything from them from yeah paper. yeah it's not yeah i suppose it's business isn't it but it's yes yeah, it's a shame isn't it because obviously uh the people getting that money are usually struggling filmmakers aren't they you know so well there also is uh yeah there's all kinds of distribution out there and very few of it ever trickles down to the filmmaker but to <laughs> the, the point i want to go back to is you better capture people at the beginning don't save you know for the big finale. Um, yeah, it's changing, you're quite right, isn't it? Yeah. You know, uh, like you say, the... bitch slap at the start. I think that's that was uh, that's the yeah, takeaway. Because right. so, it because you're right, no, it's a good way of putting it. Literally get the attention. You know what I mean? It's a great way of saying it, get the attention and, and hold it then, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? So Yeah, it's... well that's how Brazzy Jazzy opens with an argument and a boyfriend being whipped by a mannequin's head in the third by 30 seconds. And and I I say this and look, I'm a stamp comedian and we learn that you can't fake if you're funny or not. It's either funny and people laugh. Or they don't. You don't then get to explain it. Which happens at a lot of festivals when people are explaining to me why it's funny. You know, in the Q&As and stuff. I don't want to go. <laughs> or in the audience. People, people were laughing. It doesn't matter if you're trying to explain how uh, creative and edgy you were, but no one laughed. And yeah. I, as a stand <laughs> comedian, you're like, whoa, I, uh, when I'm on stage, I'm like, well, you should have laughed here because let me explain why. Now, I was talking about James Woods and how crazy he is, and you didn't seem to connect that to the fact that I am that kind of Buddhist. Like oh, yeah. yeah. I'm like, oh, oh yeah. So, and I'm like, so I, so I say that with comedy, which, as you know, is the biggest genre in web series, but it's yeah. also the least successful. Because one, yeah, you have yeah. less competition, and two, it's so subjective. It's so subjective that it, something else I, I've learned is obviously I've seen my own episodes a thousand times. I don't find many of them funny anymore or any of them, but that doesn't mean I'm going to go back and change them and make the change the lines to make it funny to me. It <laughs> is what it is. It's a, yeah. it's a, it's a snapshot in time. 
don't keep rewriting your stuff and rewriting it, rewriting it because you don't find it funny anymore because you've heard the joke a hundred times. Other people have it. So that's why table reads, table reads in front of people. I mean, it's like a, a stage read where you walk around, you have the script in your hands and you have like 20 people there, a friend, whatever, and just run through the whole show, like 10, 15 minutes. The actors, even if they're reading off the page and they're acting, and you see what works and what doesn't work. Don't wait yeah. for it. You've already shot it and like, oh, wow, that didn't work. Yeah, well, it shouldn't. Before you put it, uh, don't just keep shooting and trying to find something. I guess in my point. Yeah. And like you say, be brave enough. If it doesn't work, just, just cut it. Do you know what I mean? Be brave enough to, to think, yeah, you know. I've, I had someone uh, I was talking with, I was helping out. His, he was doing a comedy. He had some good stuff in there, but his episodes were 12 minutes. I got one. Standard web series comedies are five to seven because you want that energy. It's really hard to keep it going. Much yeah. less for a 30 minute episode. And that's one of the things I've had because I work in 30 minute episodes or 22 yeah. minute episodes. That's much harder. And you don't only have to be funny, you have to keep like two or three storylines going and you have to keep things going forward. The joy of a web series is you may have two scenes or one scene in your, your episode. You can just the best, boom, 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 get out before you have to do anything really important. And then the next episode, you can pick up somewhere else. You don't have to show them walking there or, you know, oh, I'm going to Tim's house and we're going to you know, discuss that uh, problem he has. You know, the second episode <laughs> just opens here at Tim's house. And you've already talked about, yeah, that sounds like a bad problem. So you've cut out like 30 seconds to a minute of connective tissue that you would need in a 22 minute episode. So four to five minutes, boom, you know, keep your title short, which is another thing. I have people with a minute and a half titles yeah. on a four minute episode. No, uh, no. I, I don't know where you come up with all these crew members. I have four. Yeah. <laughs> that was something else someone said at a festival. Like, how can you put your whole crew on there? My whole crew was four people. Was, I mean, make up people. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was our, of less our transportation supervisor aka teamster is you know juan macho uh gonzalez you know like, come on it's it's a web series there's a cameraman yeah. there's a sound person and there's yeah. someone else and then you yeah that's it but, you know, I think for the Zoom date one, I I think at the beginning, I think it's just the actual title of the series, I think. And then at yeah, the yeah. end, there's some more, but the main was just, we're in and I think less than 20 seconds, I think, you know, because time is money in that respect. Yeah, you don't want to switch it off, you know what I mean? You've got a big line. Right. I mean, you are an thing. academic now, but they, they don't need to know, hey, this is, you know, dating ritual by Chris Henry you know, written by, we don't need to know all that up front. If, if we like it, we'll wait till the credits. Yeah. Oh, that was yeah. written by Chris Embry. Yeah. I don't yeah. remember that guy. <laughs> like, I'm yeah. not going to remember it from the beginning anyways. I don't know who wrote it. Yeah. We say leave it for the end, isn't it? You know what I mean? Let's just, you know, crack on with what you're doing, isn't it? And let's, you know. It's yeah. a web series. They could, they could pause it at the end and see if they want to grab your name, screenshot your name. You yeah, know? yeah. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Come in, you know, come in on fire, you know, uh, boom. Uh, you know, not like, you know, the slow opening. I mean, drama is different, but uh, I, you know. But even I, so, I guess web drama, you've probably got the same problem, haven't you? You've, you've got to get, that's going to be trickier, but you're quite right. You've got to get in and got to get out. And, you know, again, you've still got to try and get them in that first shot. So that would be tricky for a drama, I guess, but. Well, as you, one of your celebrated shows from, I think, 2021, uh, Cancel. Yes, yeah. It's brilliant. It's yeah. a dramedy. They come in, you know, they're already, you know, the screen is on, he's sitting on the couch, you know, shout out to Luke Eve. Um, he's, they don't even post the title until, like, two minutes in. They go, oh, yeah. like, cancel the wedding, boom, cancel. And there then you go. the show goes. Yeah. yeah, I don't need to know. You know the name is canceled. You've clicked on the video. I don't need yeah, to yeah. know. If you want yeah. to look at all the titles even before you start the video, you can. So don't waste your screen time on that. Correct. It's so yeah. little, as they call it, real estate. Do it. Use every second of it. 
because the last thing you ever want to do is, oh, I should have done this, I could have done that. Well, we're web series. There's no one who's saying we have a deadline. Oh my God, we got to finish this right now because you know Netflix is waiting for this. I, if I wait a year to do it until it's right, then it's right. It's it's right when it's right. It's not yeah, yeah. well. Yeah. I you know I can't wait anymore. I'm so it's enough enough already. Right. That may reach that point that you can't keep rewriting the same thing. You know, at some point you do have to shoot it. Yeah. It's not you get it you know, done. Yeah. Uh, not Dostoevsky here, but it's you know, there's a balance. You gotta gotta go in. You can't uh, talk about it. It's it's a visual medium. Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. It's uh, yeah, it's a tricky road, isn't it? They say it's uh, and it's all changing. But you say if you're there to tell a story, you've got lazy kind of attention spans, haven't you? Where like you say, you might have maybe. If someone just found your video, what do you reckon? You've got maybe five seconds to get someone's attention unless they click off. I reckon maybe five. Uh, well, yeah. If, uh, if they like, well, either that you better have a really good description, uh, one word, you know, one sentence uh, log line there, not a long description of <laughs> that's something else. I'm gonna, I'm a few rants here. Anyone wants to disconnect or just, you know, Send me a nasty email. You're more than welcome, but I, I'm in rant mode. Um, where I see some some web series and they have these very long summaries and descriptions. It's an existential examination. I have no idea from that, from watching what you just did. You can't tell me it's an existential examination of uh, foot fungus in the uh, modern world if it's just two guys running and then they sit on a couch and crying over his girlfriend so be careful for me the thing that hooks you in as you know log line is everything yeah yeah uh, one sentence if you want to then you know if i see the word existential or i see the word you know a has that actually come up well, yeah, yeah, that word come up existential <laughs> It's not yeah, sex. Mostly, it's not uh, sex. Sorry, right, mostly it? Europeans, not Americans. We don't even barely know what the word means. But uh, I'm going to Google it in a bit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, because my training in the U.S. film school, Hollywood, Hollywood has the shortest attention span of anyone on the planet. You yeah. Know, Europeans have a little more, but Hollywood, they, they, you know, they say the elevator pitch. Just for those who know. L there pitches how long it takes for you to go up in the elevator. So if you're going from the first to the sixth floor, you have like 15 seconds. But yeah, they generally yeah. say it's a 30 second to one minute pitch. That you have to be able to sell your show basically. Hey, I know this guy. My show is about this guy who was a wartime for correspondent and now is just getting out of jail. And he has to reconnect with his lunatic family in uh you know uh, Bing uh, uh, uh Binghamton, whatever, whatever city. And, you know, he has to face this existential dilemma existential. of uh, is, he an, is he an asshole or is he reforming? Oh, that's interesting. Who do you picture doing it? Uh, Dennis Leary. <laughs> <laughs> what are you going to do with that? <laughs> <laughs> so it's that's what I, that's the attention span in LA. Now, look, if they want to have a a physical meeting with you and you come in, you're going to get more than 30 seconds to a minute. But if you run into someone and, and like Chris interested in, hey, this is a guy from the BBC. He's, uh, he's interested in comedy. Uh, you know, the guy may be nice. I'm like, all right, give, give me a 30 second pitch on your best show. That's it. Yeah. And you're off. It doesn't have to be like this polished thing. It's like you telling a story in a bar, you're drunk. Oh my God, Chris, I got to tell you, this is a, my crazy friend Jim, you know, and that's yeah, what it yeah. is. But you've got to get it in that sentence, and you've got to have it kind of river ready, haven't you? So in case you do crop up, you can just tell people, and you know, it, it's a great one, a log line, isn't it? It's kind of like just, just literally, just that sentence, you know. And and if you can't explain your project in the log line, you don't understand it enough yourself, do you? exactly. I used yeah. to hate, well, why? I don't have to summarize my magnificent show in one sentence. Now I'm like, <laughs> I give them the log line. If you can do the log line, 
it means you, yeah, the clarion yard show. Now I even go, I tell my log line, I just like bike drop, you know, I'm like, how back around, yeah. that's it. Log line's enough for you. You want yeah. more, you come talk to me. Yeah, 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 I agree. You should keep it at that. And then, like you say, the rest will take care of itself, won't it? If, it, if it's, you know, if they're into it, yeah. And it well, can- you look at on television, uh, when you're going and scrolling through the movies on Amazon or Netflix, whatever, it's the log line they put up there. They don't put a whole description. It's a, a girl down on her luck travels to Arkansas to rediscover uh, her high school boyfriend, but runs into a meth head along the way. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, that sounds good. I like things with meth heads. So here I go. Oh. I'm invested. (laughs) (laughs) And we're off. We've done it again. (laughs) My keyword work, meth head. uh, The the existential meth head. Yeah, exactly. Existential meth head. See, you're very working your new show. By the end of this, you're going to have a log line for existential meth head. That's the name of my show. I know. It's It's yours. I'm not going to steal it from you. Existential. What's it about? Nobody knows. <laughs> Instead of doing actual math, he does the theoretical existential math that you know he's he's just out of his mind. It's not necessarily math, but it's psychological drama. Hit them, yes, that's it. It's a go go there for the needy. But it's so it's that so it's all interesting how these things come about, isn't it? Really, when you're putting it all together and log line and you've got to think about these things haven't you you know i mean it's not just making your show it's about kind of then how do you sell your show isn't it and um and you need that log line to do it what what advice would you give to people for um promoting their shows once they've made them would you say well all the rage i mean you can try and i'm going to take a step back here and give the overview here i have a full-time job because I do live in New York and, you know, the web series isn't quite paying uh, my, my standard of living. So I have limited hours and I consider myself first and foremost a writer and a director and producer. I am not a marketer. I don't want to spend hours and hours posting on Facebook and social media. So if you can partner up with it as part of your team, so to speak, is you know, you have the production side, and you're going to spend way more time on the marketing side. You probably shoot for what, four days, five days, a week? You'll be marketing for it six months. So get someone, if you're not going to be the one doing it, get someone else who's vested interest in it. Maybe you'll throw them a few bucks, but you're competing against people, you know, influencers out there who just keep posting pictures of themselves in a bikini or a cat running around in a circle. It's, uh, you can't just put your poster up there, watch my show. Yeah. Now, for me, for Brad's Jazzy, it's gotten some distribution and it's starting to make a little money. But the big thing I'm doing, as I, I discussed at the beginning, is I'm making a product placement for my wife's business. Yeah. So yeah. If it brings in business to her, it will pay for itself. And, right. you know, it's my loss leader. It, instead of filming a commercial, it's which we were never going to do anyways, it's, it's you know, unfortunately, the disgusting part of the world is, you know, brand marketing, product placement, I mean, half the stuff on the internet is that. Well, it's interesting how many times a guy was drinking a Coke in this uh, web series. It was pretty interesting. Or Red Bull, which is in everything. You know, Red Bull, you know, I don't know about you guys in the UK, here in the U.S., whenever you're shooting something, you just call Red Bull and like, look, we're shooting. Something. All right, they're sending you like three cases of this stuff. As long as you like have one shot of someone drinking a Red Bull at some point, that's 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 good for them. It's because it's not like your whole crew isn't already drinking Red Bull. It's now you. It's a cost saving, and you, you know. Yeah, I mean. So would you say that's an important thing then to try and link product place before filmmakers? Would it be something they should look at in advance or? It would be nice uh, if you're really, if you're really going to invest in this project. And like I said, it goes back to my earlier question. What is your goal of making this project? Is it a learning experience? Is it like, I'm not going to go pay to go to film school. I'm going to make like three or four web series until I really learn what I'm doing. That's fine. That's a clear goal. 
You're not yeah. expecting yeah. any of them to take off. Something happens with them, fantastic. But it's your film school. A second you know, way is, look, I, um, I have a great idea. I want to make it. Um, I think I do it. I have the resources. I have I know my, the actors. I, it's only a few locations. And, you know, I'm not going to say use an iPhone. I don't, I'm not a cinematographer. Uh, I went to film school. I think I slept through cinematography and lighting because I could not grasp any of it. And I'm not one of those cinematographers. Oh, look at the way the light envelops her. It's, uh, it's angelic. I said, we're doing a comedy. I don't care how angelic she looks. It's like, shoot faster. So, but with iPhone technology, and yeah. let me get something about iPhones. You can shoot with an iPhone. doesn't mean it's going to be good. You still need lighting. You still need to. Yeah. yeah. You still need a little equipment, like a gimbal, a control. So it's not like, oh, I'm just following you around like a TikTok video. Yeah. So if you want, again, goes back to your original goal. What is your goal? If your goal is to show this to people who work in the profession, then it's going to be professional. It means yes. lighting, yeah. sound sound mix everything you know the script will rise and fall on you the editing that's all stuff you can control you can't control whether people are going to like it but you definitely can control the quality you can definitely control the content so if that, that's your goal is i want this to be my calling card <laughs> i don't don't again be well, you see, I, in this part, I really wanted to have him fly off the building, but you know, I didn't have the budget for it. What, what are you doing? Don't explain it. It should be like, again, always think in terms of mic drop. Here, watch yeah. this. Call me in five yeah. minutes after you watch it. You, know, you don't want to hire me. So that's what it should be, if that's your goal. Well, the third one is, look, I, I want to start a project where I can build on this, that this is a web series, but I want it, it's a prelude to a film or it's a prelude to a real show. It's a, it's a, oh, it's blank on it. It's a proof of concept. Yeah. Again, it better be of quality. It can't be something that if they could get from, it may be better if they just read the script instead of watching what you did. Be very careful that if your, if your script is good, and then you give them something that's, you know, shot on your iPhone in pretty bad light, and it's it's a turn off. It will garble whatever you wrote or whatever quality you had, or you know, plot twists or whatever this. So be careful. What again? What is your intention? If your intention, you know, some people, a lot of half people in the web series world want to be technical. They're they're cinematographers. They're um, sound people, editing that's their calling card so it's not going to be the writing it's not going to be the acting yeah now actors obviously get into web series because they are trying to get more stuff for their reel yeah everyone has their you understand their motivation now i guess said it yeah i'm a writer director and obviously I'm produce my own stuff and produce other people's stuff but if my writing is been good and that's the, my main thing like what is it you know what was the point and so again, I go back to that. But in terms of, you know, you really have to go into it. You're not going to make your money back. So balance out spending on quality, which really is, Chris, you know, it's not a money issue. It's it's a preparation issue. Yeah, it's visualizing. I agree. It's planning. The technology is there, but it can't be. When you get to set, you've got to know what's going on. You have to allow room for good things to happen and improv and maybe this, but there has to be a plan and you know it, your crew knows it, the actors know it. It's not like, all right, maybe Tay will, I don't know, Tay will either shoot the bar or will shoot the park. Right? Let me think about it. <laughs> no. Need, need to have a plan. Yeah. And then once you're planned and you get your stuff, you have then time and no one's stressed and they can give you a better performance. Yes. And for me in comedy, I hear these people that shoot like 14, 16 hour days. I'm like, that's unbelievable. No one's funny for 14 or 16 hours. I was, was going to say, no, I really <laughs> exactly. didn't. I don't I, have a clue. 10 at the end is of my that. max. 10 is my max. And it's a quick 10. It's not, you know, we, 
the actors know it so they can pace themselves. But if you're like, yeah, this is an overnight shoot. We're going, we're going to start at five in the at, at night. We're going to go straight through till noon. Yeah, like good good luck with that comedy. Uh, it's you gotta. It's it all goes back to the same preparation. Think about what you're trying to do. What is your end goal? And this is web series. You don't have to consolidate everything to three days of shooting. If you want to shoot two days on this weekend, then shoot the following weekend. You don't have to shoot five consecutive days. In fact, I hate doing that. I'm too old for that. You know, I used to shoot my first feature was six days, then the day off, then six. I'm like, but I couldn't even conceive of that now. Well, that's the thing. You're the boss now. I mean, when you make web series, you can create however you want to do it, can't you? Like, you, like you're explaining there, isn't it? Don't put the added pressure on yourself. Work around yourself, isn't it, really? Well, also for the actors, that they don't have to take, you know, five consecutive days off from work or... Yes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I assume you're not paying them a living wage or hopefully you're paying them a mildly living wage. But if you say, look, we're shooting Saturday and Sunday, this is it. That way, they also can put all their energy into it. It's two days. It's yeah. not five. It's like, all right, God, I'm really. Or if they think it's five and they really sort of warm up that first day. No, no, yeah, no, yeah. no. This, this day counts. I mean, we're coming in hot here. Maybe you rehearsed the day before, but you're coming in day one, hour one. You should already be, you know, by the 15 minute mark of the first day, you have to be shooting. So that means you're not prepared. Yeah. It, 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 funny, I was just thinking back to this feature film, we're still not finished yet, but uh, we were shooting in a ballroom and uh, it went on far too long and some of the actors were getting quite dehydrated because <laughs> it was quite <laughs> hot in there. Anyway, next time we're shot, we're in this big suite uh, at, at a hotel. <laughs> and, uh, I said, oh, look at this, lads. And they've got, you know, they've got water, they've got uh, coffee and biscuits. And the first actor said, oh, lovely, look at all... How long are we here for? No, no. <laughs> that was my plan. I hadn't told him how long I had them for, but he wasn't stupid. He saw everyone. He went, oh, <laughs> how long? <laughs> yeah, he's got the no dose here. He's got the Red Bull. Like, we ever leave? Yeah, exactly. And them knowing, look, actors have their own process, but if you give them the parameters, like, look, Saturday, these are the three things. Don't send you know the call sheet the night before, and then they have to like, oh wow, well, God, I have to learn that scene. I didn't even know that. Um, send them the you know it's before you even shoot. Like this is the this is the general plan on day one. We're shooting uh, Chris running across this through traffic. Uh, two, then we're gonna cut into we're gonna shoot in the pub for like three hours. Lunch, then we're gonna go across the street to the park again. And we're going to have that frisbee competition, and then we're going to end in the pub shot again, and then close out and drinks. And everyone's like, "All right, they they know the plan. Things will change. Trust me. This is a web series, and chaos. It should be your your plan. That's plan A. Plan C or D is what's really going to happen." Yeah, well, it's guerrilla filmmaking as well, and that's usually the most fun you'll ever have is that form of filmmaking, isn't it? That's uh, and you have to improvise, and like you say, be creative all the time, isn't it? Um, well, that's the... also doing two or three day shoots in a row also lessens the pressure on you as the director or producer, whatever oh, yeah. the title is, because you know, look, I can't if I fall behind a little here, I'm gonna have to make it up on the following weekend. I can't try and all squeeze make it up in these. Only five days I have to shoot. What happens if it rains? What happens if you know this or you know my actress comes down with COVID or you know? Yeah, so yeah. short shoots and flexibility allow you to make up for you know, the inevitable problems that are going to come up. Excellent. Yeah, yeah, it's true. Um, so, what would you say is the best advice you could give an emerging filmmaker? And on all the things we've covered. What's the best advice? Would it be the old bitch slap start? I'm taking uh, that, by the way. I'm taking, start, that. Yeah, I'm yeah, taking yeah. that. It's gone in. I think that's great, yeah. Well, it was in Brazzy Jazzy when she says, uh, wait, when she has the Brazilian coffee for the first time, the blonde girl, Kelly, or Marty is her character name, 
It's like, oh my God, that's like being bitch slapped in the face by a drag queen. Yeah, so that was, you know, that was episode two. You know, boom, <laughs> that's, you know, that's how you have to hit the ground running. Um, I learned in film school, they always said two things. I always told them. One, every scene, come in late, leave early. It sounds simple, but, you know, you don't need all this explanation build up at the beginning of the scene. You're already in it, especially in web series. Boom, you open, you're already arguing with the person at the table. You don't need to see you come in, sit down, yeah. order water, and then start arguing. No, you come in arguing. That's, the, that's how the audience is introduced. They, 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 the audience is an idiot. They've seen everything out know, already. It's like, oh, I didn't know. How, did I, how the hell did you get to the restaurant? That's, yeah. that's, what kind of filmmaker is this? And he just magically appears in the restaurant? Because it's irrelevant. You know, we're showing the yeah. best part. And the other thing is, every actor I ever tell us to, they all say I'm a liar. I'm wrong. So my film school teacher, who's a great writer, and this is in the screenwriting portion, goes, is the film you write, the film yep. you shoot, and the film you edit. If half of your screenplay ends up in the finished product, you did a great job. So you know that. And, you know, Bo Goldman, very famous screenwriter, gave this whole story about how, uh, I think it was Butch Cassidy and Sundance, where he had this one sentence. He goes, this first sentence he wrote, and it was the key of the whole script. But when they started shooting, they cut that. And he goes, yeah. I, I, he goes, at first I was shocked. Then he goes, oh. I guess right. It was right. It was it was the spark of an idea that caused the rest. It was not the key line. It was an unnecessary line because we explained stuff earlier. So when you get on set, the whole point is your script may be gorgeous and perfect in this. Once you get actors saying it, it goes out the window because they're gonna their own rhythms and idiosyncrasies. And this actor may not have good chemistry with that actor or this location, just we can't get the coverage we need. And also, we don't need that middle part of that scene. We're cutting right to the, this. Yeah. Then in editing, you're like, oh my God, I tell actors all the time, you got to remember this. I'm, you're going to be on set for like three or four days. I'm going to see your face on the screen probably for the next two months. And yeah. if it's not interesting, I'm going to resent you. And I'm going to have to cut you out of parts or shorten your scene because it's just not working. You don't want that to happen. No, no. <laughs> you don't want to piss me off, A, for not being good enough. And when we go to Lower East the Sides, it's an ensemble. There's 19 lead, theoretical lead characters and 30 speaking parts. They're not all going to be at the same level. Certain people get to get better with others. Certain people pop with just natural ability. They, they just, their face, whatever. And others are just like, you don't even remember. And so what was good for me on this web series tour for Lower East Side is getting the feedback of what worked. Even though for most people, you know, people like different things and you know, it's their own uh, perspectives they bring. But there's very consistent feedback I get about certain characters and not so much about other characters that you it's the greatest level of market research you can do even yeah. though you thought you did everything flawlessly and it's not oh. the audience identifies in different ways and in different countries it's different things I had a festival tell me oh, God. you know I couldn't watch it it was too American like, okay. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> yeah, well, thank you. I am. Thank you very much. It, true, it is American. Um, it's based in it's America. Rock and roll. <laughs> it, yeah, it's not. Uh, you know, it's a very hard driving rock and roll type thing. All right. And again, I go back to the same thing where I, you know, here in the US, when I worked in distribution. We would say, don't try and make the people, I don't know, I'm going to pick on Nebraska or Oklahoma or whatever. Don't try and be all things to all people. They'll make sure that your series, you know, they like it in New York, Miami, Los Angeles, you know, Nebraska, Chicago, Texas. Because a success in the United States um, 
is three million people. That sounds like a lot to watch your show. That's more than watch like Breaking Bad or anything. That's 1% of the United States, pretty big country, but it's the same all over the world. You want your rabid 1% that want your show. If other people hop on, then you have a super hit. But if you have that people in the US at least, 1%, 3 million people watching your show, hey, that's a success. So why am I trying to re yeah. reach 30%? I'm not going to. There's yeah. so much out there and just know who you who are people like you, your similar type of humor, your similar type of drama or horror or whatever. Play to them. Don't try and play to people. Well, I, you know, I know my parents don't like you know, horror, but uh, they don't like this. No, they're not. It's yeah. uh, they may sit through it because you know you're related to them, but uh, don't aim for that audience. I think that's uh, that's sound advice. That and uh, absolutely perfect. I mean, that's that's the way when you summarise it. That's great, and hopefully, what you're saying there will save some um, young filmmakers, you know, a lot of years of mistakes as well if they just aim now for, you know, that. Do the period, best. Yeah, it? it should it should be something that resonates with you. Don't, Correct. Don't, yeah. I'm not going to go out and make a horror film because I don't. I'm not good at it. I don't know anything about the genre. So don't you know? I don't need to widen my well. I do comedy, I do drama, I do horror, I do action. I'm not saying limit yourself and know your lane, but know your strength because you can't be a. I I would say know your passion none. as well, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, know your passion, isn't it? Really, isn't it? Know that. Yeah. I can well. So what? I can do a technically decent horror film, but I don't know the touchstones of what makes horror great. But it looks good, so who cares? I, yeah, I'm, I'm yeah. not going to compete against people, and I respect them. That's their category; they know it. They, you know, horror films, as you know, do very well, uh, yeah. very limited budgets. But you have to know that genre. It's not yeah. just show up and shoot it. It's the same with comedy. You know, you hang out with a bunch of your friends. Not everyone's funny. You know, you can look around. Yeah. You know, there's some that are funnier than others, some that are, you know, more dramatic than others, some are better looking than others, some's a better athlete. So just know where you are and accept it and be good with it. Be happy with it. I don't want to get too Buddhist on you, but uh, I no, am, that's, that's terrific, yeah. You got but that comes through when you're watching something. You can tell if someone's really into it. I mean, there's some series out there, when you meet them on the track. And you can tell this guy. No, this guy really gets it. She really. You can see her in this, even if she's not an actor in it, or an actress, or he's not an actor. But it's their, their thought, their creation. You still can put their face to it. And when you talk to them, it's like, yeah, well, but you really put your stamp on it, and that's all you want. And then the last thing I say to my wife all the time is there. Other people who work in this industry is in the end, minimum, you know, we went through a, a pandemic and, you know, there's a couple wars going on. There's, you know, it's a tough economy, this and that. So theoretically, you enjoy doing this. Don't do it because you feel it's your next step in life. No, it's you really have to love it because there's not going to be yeah. too, many, too many other benefits <laughs> to it. No, second, I in the end, Minimal, sorry. In the end, minimally, you'll have a portfolio of stuff you did. Here's, look, go to my website. Here are six series I've done over the last five, six, seven years. And it can, some can be, you know, partnership with others or us. And, you know, if you have kids, you have relatives, they can go there. They go, yeah, Steve, you know, that guy's a, he's not as dull as I thought he was or dim <laughs> I think uh, no, I think that's great. That um, that brings us to time. But I was going to say, what a note to kind of end on about just saying, you know, follow it because you want to do it. You know what I mean? And usually, if you follow anything, we were chatting yesterday. We did another interview, and we kind of said the same thing. If you 
follow your passion, always good things tend to come from it, you see, isn't it? And it's, you know, residual, it, at least. Yeah, I'm not saying financial reward is you're going to be there, but at least you feel good about it. I mean, I feel yeah. good when I look back on it and go, like, yeah, it was good. I, I liked it. You know, my next one will be better. And that's how you have to think. You know, your next right, one, can't yeah. be, especially in the festival, so, you know, uh, if I, my next show better be better than my last. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Going in the wrong direction. Correct. Yeah. I, I just want to give a shout that. out to a new series we're shooting, hopefully pretty soon. Uh, someone you know, uh, Sergio Kalili, who did uh, Forest League. That's right. Yeah. A show in Brazil in Portuguese. That's gonna. Oh, fantastic! No, 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 that's what you should do. Meet up with people who know stuff different than you, and. You know, one plus together. one equals three. Now, hopefully not one plus one equal one and a half, but one plus one equal three, that your combined efforts can take you to an even higher level. It's true, and it's just working together, and even going, going back to just um, uh, like-minded people getting together. I mean, like I say, we've been chatting now, and, and I've really enjoyed chatting because we're chatting about creativity and stuff, but also, I think now, because of the web series and the links and that. I thought there's not too many countries I could actually travel to. Like if I was in New York, I think, oh, I'd give Steve a call. You know what I mean? There's all these people now that you've kind of met, you could actually you know, meet up with and just, you know, have a beer with and stuff. And it's that kind of community, isn't it? Where you've now kind yeah. of got. Well, yeah, it's, uh, it's good. Like I said, uh, it's a little easier for me online that you get to choose the people you want to spend time with. Yeah. Um, going to festivals uh we haven't gone to any this year i'm just saying we i think our first one we're going to be going to traveling is here in the u.s is miami nice so, yeah, yeah yeah well it's in our country it's a little easier as you know it's a little hard to traveling now i don't know how it is in europe it's yeah airlines well, are insane shortage of staff at the minute <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> same here they and, sacked everyone during the pandemic, you know. <laughs> yeah, so uh, and then New Jersey, which is obviously across the river. So shout out to me and Brian Thompson in Miami. But uh, yeah, I'm excited to go there because so, some of you I still have never met in person. I've met yeah, yeah, yeah. online. So it was weird, like, you know, Karis, who does uh, Pepper Project. We've never met here in New York. She lives here in New York with me. I've met her in Sicily and I've met her in Spain. I've met not... her in New York. <laughs> <laughs> so, Karis, if you're watching, uh, we live, and she's like, called me the other day because we we're going to try and do something together. We live like 20 blocks away from each other. Uh, but she's always busy. I'm always busy. And, but like, she's like, are you, are you going to Toronto? I said, why don't you go to, you live here, I live here, why, I don't like to go to Toronto. Just go to the coffee shop. <laughs> <laughs> you go to the Toronto Web Fest, I'm like, I don't know, it's a little tough getting into Canada these days. Uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or we could go to uh, Starbucks down uh, 20 blocks from, we'll split 100%. the difference. So, but, but that's what it's become is it's, there's so many people I know virtually. Like I shouted out Luke Eve earlier. I have never seen him in person. Um, I hope to one day. Oh, yeah. Uh, we're competing against each other in a category in the new little vague. Um, uh, but, you know, I've met all the Brazilians because I've been down in Brazil a couple of times and you know, I am theoretically sort of Brazilian. But, yeah, I haven't been to England. I haven't been, to, you know, is British Web Awards ever going to be, you know, live at the uh, in person? Uh, it keeps cropping up. Um, we're not sure if we're going to do it. Maybe every couple of years, do one big kind of uh, thing. That's one idea. Um, uh, but yeah, I'd, I'd I'd love to do that. We we even thought about it this year because we've got a big um, a big screening at the end of the year, and we thought maybe we could tie the two events kind of together. There'll be loads of filmmakers there, so. Um, and we've had places offer for um, to host it as well. So uh, we'll, we'll see. It's in the motion. I, I like what we're doing online at the minute. Like I said, no, I'd it, it works. I'd love to, I yeah, told you it like works for me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You get to, to watch. watch. Yeah. But every uh, couple of years, I thought that might be nice to actually have something. And then 
you could maybe have some award categories from previous things, you know what I mean? Or something. So be well, lovely. You'd rent out the Ministry of Sound and we just have a raid. Easy. Yeah. <laughs> Saturday night, that place is never crowded. So that should be. Yeah. The you vacancy know, in Web Downing. Award rave. Vacancy in Downing Street as well. So we're doing a we're doing all right. <laughs> <Don't go. laughs> all yeah, right, right, Steve. We'll, we'll round up there, my friend. That's been an absolute pleasure and a bit of a web series masterclass, thanks to yourself as well. I think, and oh, I hope lots well. of uh, hope lots of filmmakers come and take that advice and stuff. And that's because there's there's nuggets of gold in there, isn't there? And it's uh, it's absolutely what it's about. I, I don't know about gold, but at least, uh, you know, copper. It's uh, uh, silver. I, silver. Uh, you know, you're ball, you know, to summarize, you guys are ballsy or big uh, ovaries for even being in this uh, business. Just remember, you're, you're already a star for doing it. So if you're going to do yeah. it, please will do it right. You know, it's yeah. nothing yeah. worse than I had it, an opportunity, and I didn't do my best because this or my you know, girlfriend broke up with me or you know you can come, always come up with an excuse no one gives a, sh uh, a, a darn <laughs> <laughs> don't fucking swear yeah, exactly this is uh we have a diff <laughs> different culture going on now <laughs> all right well hopefully we'll get you back on and we'll be catching up again with you soon Steve. but yeah you're our first double reappearance on the creative interviews and it's uh, been a pleasure once more I so, appreciate it. And best oh, again, I've, I've congratulations, Professor. Uh, it's uh, well, you now know. your credential. Now you're doing it, you know, above board. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> now oh, you okay. can legally collect uh, <laughs> for your okay, expertise. <laughs> <laughs> we'll speak soon, Steve. All right, mate. All right, take care, man. Take care. Bye.